Good evening, children. This is Emily Blunt saying spit spot. Welcome to the Practically Perfect Graham Norton Show. <laughs> say if you are going out for a few drinks this Christmas please be careful not to overdo it it's only the 21st of December already I've seen one party get completely out of control yeah <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> 21st of December uh, but in the world of politics everyone's getting ready for Christmas Jeremy Corbyn he'll be enjoying a vegan Christmas lunch well I say enjoying uh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> He's having a marrow, isn't he? And uh, he says he's going to stuff it. Mm. <laughs> Might we suggest where? Uh, <laughs> in America, Melania, Melania Trump, God love her, uh, she was put in charge of the White House Christmas trees. Now, it is, it is an odd choice of Christmas tree, but red is her favourite colour. I mean, she's even used it in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back home, Theresa May has put up her Christmas tree. I know. <laughs> I know it's a bit pathetic, but she insists she got the best possible deal. <laughs> oh, 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 no, she suffered enough. Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll have music from Pop Icon Boy George and Culture Club. Yes, we will. Christmas tree. We've got the stars of the hotly awaited Mary Poppins Returns. Uh, he's the BAFTA winning British actor who starred in Paddington, James Bond and A Very English Scandal. It's Ben Whishaw, everybody! <laughs> That's Ben Whishaw. There he is. Hello, sir. Have a seat here. There's your wife. This actress and writer has starred in Cars, Shutter Island, Doll and M and the Emmy winning The Newsroom. It's Emily Mortimer, everybody! <laughs> He's the multi-award winning genius behind the global hit musical Hamilton. It's Lynn manuel Miranda! And she's the Golden Globe winning star of The Girl on the Train, The Devil Wears Prada, Sicario at a Quiet Place. Now, taking on the iconic role of Mary Poppins, it's Emily Blunt! <laughs> Drink, everyone drink. Every, every. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. Cheers. 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 Don't have any. Oh. oh. Uh, hey, it's a party for five. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, there's only a few days to go. And uh, obviously, you are kind of the Mary Poppins family kind of reunited. But for Christmas, where are you, are you all going to? All do? together. Uh, right? Oh, yeah. yes. All together. <laughs> On Cherry Tree Lane. <laughs> Is this, is this the end of the Mary Poppins whirlwind now? Is it's this... Just about. Nearly, yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah. Now it belongs to the world. Right, yes. It must yeah. be weird after all this time, because when did you actually finish this film? May 2017. Well done. Two years we ago. We don't remember what happens mm. in the movie. <laughs> so, it is a long time ago. Yes. Mm. So is it nice to come back and see each other again? Or yes. yes. It actually is wonderful. It's it's the best. Oh, how nice. <laughs> a happy Mary Poppins family. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this is it. No pressure. It's just the most loved film of all time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Mary Poppins Returns. Uh, not so much a sequel. It's more of a kind of companion piece, wouldn't you say? That's a good way of saying it. Sort of a, I guess, yes. Well, it's, let's it's just say alongside. that. It's a 54-year-awaited sequel. Yeah, it's not like out of, ooh, what's going to happen next? It's, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a whole standard it, film. Yeah. And it opens everywhere from today and already four Golden Globe nominations and SAG Awards and all sorts. And before we talk about it, here's a taste of what to expect. Wow! <laughs> That's it! That's your movie right there. Hey. Uh, 
And it must be lovely, I was saying to you guys, it must be lovely to, to see it, you know, after all this time with all, you know, all the animation and everything back in it. And... It is amazing, actually, because when we shot the animation, it was all on a green screen, so we were sort of interacting with a tennis ball and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the movie's about imagination and we needed to use ours because <laughs> all of our co-stars were to be drawn later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, obviously, Emily Blunt, you're Mary Poppins, that yes. we know. Yes. Uh, but Emily M? Let's go with Emily M. Emily M. Okay. And, uh, and Ben, now you play returning characters also. Yes. Yes. Tell, tell us who. Tell, <laughs> tell, tell them, Ben. We're Michael and Jane Banks, but grown up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you've sort of grown into yeah. your parents in odd sorts of ways. Yes, but sort of shyer, slightly more afraid versions <laughs> of our parents who were very eccentric, kind of out there, slightly odd weird people in the first movie, brilliantly played by Glynis Johnson, David Tomlinson. Yeah. But, yes, and I'm an a activist really and sweet, he's a banker. There's a really sweet cameo that, if you don't know, you'd miss it. So, I think you should tell people there's, that the original Jane... Yes, Karen Detrice, who was the original Jane in, in, the, in the movie, in the first movie, who was the little girl, is, is in a scene with the three of us. Yeah. But she bumps into him coming out of the house. Yeah. And she asked for directions. Yes, yeah, she asked for directions. And if you know, you go, <gasps> and if you don't know, you go, mm, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll tell people, we'll tell people. Uh, but now, uh, Lynn, you are a new character. Yes. Who you? I play, who me? <laughs> who me? <laughs> um, I play uh, Jack the Lamplighter. I sort of, uh, he's defined as he's an apprentice to Bert from the first film, but... Bert has, like, 20 jobs in that first film, so it really could mean anything. He painted watercolours, he plays 12 instruments, um, you know, he flirts with Mary Poppins. Um, so, you know, it could mean anything, but, but Jack sort of knows that Mary is magic and he's, he's the wingman. He plays the wingman position. And uh, in this country, at least for as long as I can remember, people have had a sort of obsession about Dick Van Dyke's accent. I know, it's it, so good, right? It, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know how he nailed it, but... Um, but, but uh, were you aware of that? Did you know that we, we yes. all... Yes. OK. I, you know, Dick Van Dyke turned 93 years old last week. Wow. Thank you, Dick Van Dyke. We are still talking about his accent in Mary Poppins, so I knew that whatever I did, it would be discussed for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's... I mean, and I, I don't think I'm giving anything away. I mean, he dances. Yeah. He does. He gets three rounds of applause People keep movie. asking if it's CGI. It's so me mean. So ridiculous. No, no, he it, is that him. limber. You can't believe he's that lithe, but he is. And does he... I mean, uh, did he kind of connect...? <laughs> 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 I don't know what that was. <laughs> but did he kind of connect you to the original? Did, was he kind of... Because for him, it must have been a kind of such an odd thing to be back in this world after well, all these years. we all sat around like kids just wanting him to tell us about the original. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is just so... He is so instantly m magical. It was very moving having him around and... He's so positive and so full of life, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's got that glint in his eye. Very That's special. very much what the movie's about. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a little kid. And, Emily, uh, what was it like getting the call saying, you know, you're Mary Poppins? I mean, I was really shocked. I, I mean, I, I... Rob Marshall, the director, called me, and, and it was... I've known him a long time, but this phone call had such a sort of charged energy behind it that I thought, well, either he's going to propose to me <laughs> and I'll probably say yes. But, um, <laughs> but when he said... You know, there was this long preamble and then he did announce it was Mary Poppins. I was completely shocked. I, I remember just being stunned. I, it was the last thing I expected him to say. And it must be not because you were in the middle of Girl on a Train. I was. When you were doing... Basically the same movie. It's just nothing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, more. <laughs> nothing says Mary Poppins like a blackout drunk. <laughs> <laughs> And then... No, look at her. I, I mean... <laughs> I mean, she should look after your children. <laughs> They're in here somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't let them out. Exactly. Uh, but then, there must have been moments, you know, those iconic scenes where you're just thinking, look at me, I'm Mary Poppins. I think the entrance, <laughs> I was like, holy... Yeah. I'm Mary Poppins. It was that didn't moment. Say that. I didn't say no, that. Didn't say that. Um, <laughs> it was like I was sixty feet in the air with you know the bag and the umbrella and the coat, and it was just and the feet in relevant. and the feet. Yes, first position. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that that was a moment of um, 
oh my god, this is happening, you know. And of course, there are lots of challenges in the in the film, uh, like the flying is physically challenging. But Lynn, you had uh, well, uh, kind of. It, it's more physically challenging than maybe it looks. What, yeah, yeah. You know, lamplighter is not the easiest job uh, <laughs> people have ever had. I mean, it's a lot of climbing ladders and riding very cumbersome bikes. There's one scene. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dancing and there's a lot of special effects in this movie. But my hardest scene was a scene where I light a lamp, put my lamp lighter stick back in its holster on my bike, steal an apple from a cart, throw it to an orphan over my shoulder, all while singing in my Cockney accent, <laughs> all in a single take on British cobblestone streets. Um, and that 10 seconds is the hardest I have ever worked. <laughs> and uh, Emily Mortimer, yes. uh, you fa in this film, you face two of your biggest fears, but at the same time. Yes. <laughs> what? It was hell, singing. Oh, singing, yeah. Which I'm preternaturally scared of <laughs> and terrible at. No, and you're also, not terrible well, at well, it. Well, Rob Marshall helped me through my phobias of both... But I had to sing... I'm also very, very, very scared of heights. <laughs> and I had to be suspended from a great height um, by a sort of small piece of rope um, off a crane above London while singing. <laughs> and <laughs> poor Lynn had to hold my hand for... And they were very sweaty. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I became known as Mistress Clammy Hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a really sexy nickname. Did you think you were going to die? Because I had a moment of thinking, if this is how I die, I would die dressed as Mary Poppins. <laughs> that would be a really bad way to go. You know? it, it really required a lot of acting, pretending to be overcome with joy. <laughs> <laughs> at that moment. And then, Ben, now, very challenging. A lot of your scenes are with the children. Mm. You, have, uh, you play the dad of three mm. small children. And is it the smallest one? had a kind of truth serum. <laughs> well, I think they all sort of did. But, um, but yes, Joel um, was the youngest uh, actor. <laughs> and he, um, he did sort of pull faces if he didn't sort of believe what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. but, but, no, he was but amazing. Joel, but you had run-ins with Joel as well. Well, Joel was just... He was I think we've got a picture of Joel. I, mean, I think we've got a picture of Joel. No, but look... <laughs> I, I mean, look at... That's, that's Joel there. That was yeah. pretty much Joel all oh, day, <laughs> every day, and... And was, was it just, just one? They didn't have twins, the way they. No, it was it was it was just Joel, and two <laughs> two would have been too much actually. But there was like Joel wrangling that would go, and you just hear ten voices from every corner of the set going, Joel, focus, Joel, please, Joel, stop it now, Joel, Joel, focus, <laughs> Joel. We there was a scene where they're holding uh, cotton candy, candy floss, and he um, he wasn't supposed to eat it between takes. But how do you tell an eight-year-old boy not to eat candy floss? Yeah. <laughs> so he ate it every take. <laughs> And if you watch the scene, I think he's actually not in his right mind. He is, like, <laughs> so high on sugar. <laughs> he's literally going, like... <laughs> it's incredible. And what was the thing he would try to make you laugh? Well, Joel would say to me, um, as I was sort of preparing for a very fast-paced Mary Poppins monologue, and it was just for a second, I just needed to focus, just for a second, and they'd be like, rolling, rolling, and you'd hear Joel go, Emily, what do you get if you put the letter B in front of the word oobs? You didn't want to, but, you know, and then they'd be like, an action, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the original film, obviously, we've, we've all seen that and, and grew up with it, but, uh, but Emily Mortimer, you were quite traumatised by it. <laughs> well, there are some weird elements to it um, that sort of strike... Well, they're, they're very interesting when you're a small child. One of which is the... Uh, the we keep talking about this, mm. the nannies being... Do you remember all blown those away. nannies being blown away <laughs> at the beginning of she, Mary Poppins? Oh, they were applying for the job. Mm. Yes. And she rocks up. Yes, and they're yeah. line, lined up in a queue outside the house to apply for the job, and then she rocks up and she... Look, there they are! And they go... <laughs> it's so amazing, it's so sort of surreal. Showing their knickers. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I never, I never questioned it, but I suppose they did all die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose yes, they did. You would be bummed if you auditioned for Mary Poppins and you got that part. <laughs> and they were... But I think now, in terms of the original film, the, the superfan on the couch, Ben Whishaw. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, it was a popular film in the Whishaw household, I think. <laughs> Only with me. <laughs> no one else could bear to watch it, but I'm forced to. <laughs> you watched it a lot, though. Endlessly. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you identified with Mary. I wanted to be her. Yes. <laughs> and now, I, honestly, I didn't break into your house. You did send us this picture. But someone in the Wishaw household took a picture of young Ben. I, how old are you in this picture? I think I'm about three or four. About oh three God. or four. And this is Ben Wishaw giving us his Mary. 
Oh my God. <laughs> Good noise, everyone. Good noise. Uh, <laughs> With your little lunch the box, lunch the box carpet is bag, the lunch carpet box. bag. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Still in character from when he was three. That's I, the carpet bag. Oh, bang! Like, that that umbrella is. Amazing. Did you nick that or something? That's so perfect. I don't know who any of that belonged to. I let it <laughs> kill. And, uh, it's a kill. It's I a kill, but over a dress. I think it's a, it's a it's a dress over another dress. You're layering. So on trend. <laughs> 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 uh, now, Lynn Manuel Miranda, I would say you, you don't sound like the easiest of, of children. You recently <laughs> tweeted some letters. These are genius. These are letters you wrote to your parents from, from, summer, from, from summer, summer camp. camp yeah. Okay. So the one is the first one's kind of a form letter. So it's hi from camp, dear mom and dad, how are you? In hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <be> okay. <laughs> Yesterday I realised that my tent was full of morons. <laughs> oh my God. Today, these really annoying kids are bugging, bugging me. Us, yeah. Tomorrow, excruciating boring class begins. I can't wait to <laughs> go home. <laughs> Please send me some mad magazine, something like that. Uh, lovely Miranda. P.S. The kids are okay if you get used to them. Now, this oh, next one no. is all his own work. This, it, <laughs> this contains drawings and all sorts. It's on Garfield paper. You should know he's taking it seriously. Yes. Uh, dear family, hi. Remember me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kid you ditched in the woods for a month. <laughs> you know how we hardly ever go to Mass? Well, I go every Sunday. Here's a picture to remind you of me. And it's... <laughs> it's, it's you jumping off a building. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that. And the weird thing is, you did get out of camp. I did. It was the performance of my life. I'm not proud of it as an adult. And if my kids ever ask about it, I'll deny it. Um, but I faked a spinal injury. <laughs> oh, my goodness. To get out of camp. There was a kid who hurt his back and got to go home. And I went, huh. <laughs> and then the next day, I was alone with a friend of mine. I threw myself on the floor. I pretended I couldn't feel my legs. And I was rushed to the hospital. And I had to keep up this performance all summer. And I, I had a fake limp. And I went to... I had x-rays at Bellevue Hospital wow. in New York City. And... But I went home. I got to yeah. go home. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> talking... Talking of... of Making things. Emily, you have a story <laughs> about your dad, John Mortimer, who wrote Rumpel of the Bailey and stuff. Didn't your dad come to visit you in Russia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. He came. Yes, he came to visit me in Russia where I was on a year, but gap year between school and university. And I made him take me to the most expensive restaurant in Moscow, which was at the top of the Metropole Hotel, I think it was called, because I hadn't been eating very well on this. <laughs> anyway, we went and, and he was being so sort of generous and so happy to see me and he ordered caviar and I was just, it was so great. And we had champagne and caviar, but without looking at the menus. And then they brought us the menus and the, uh, one order of caviar was something like 250 pounds or whatever the equivalent was. And we both felt absolutely sick. And my dad said, we have to get out of here. And I said, I know. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to fake a heart attack. And I said, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he started sort of clutching his heart. <laughs> <laughs> to tend to him and rush him out of there, and it was brilliant, and we didn't pay. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there are kids who love Mary Poppins Returns who are watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking of Mary Poppins Returns, let's watch another clip. This is uh, the children being introduced to the fantasy world of Mary. Butts and mares, cubs and does, welcome to our show of shows. It is my great honour to introduce this evening's renowned guest. The one. The only. Mary Poppins! Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Come on up. Silly chair. Go. No, I haven't sung in years. Sing for us, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Do Mary sing for me. Uh, no, I couldn't possibly. D flat major. That was little Joe on a sugar rush. Little Joe, how out of mind. And was it always the idea, or did that come later, that you would go with the kind of original sort of 2D animation? Yes, I think Rob really wanted to pay homage to the original. I think it would have been kind of sad if 
we'd had this sort of slick animation in our version. I think when you think of Mary Poppins, you think of yourself as a child and how you grew up. And so it is sort of nostalgic watching the whole sequence. Yeah. And of course, now, I suppose, there'll be a whole new generation of, of kids who fall in love with this uh, Mary Poppins. And so, Emily, how your kids, how are they with it? Well, I think, um, I mean, my youngest, my two-year-old, has a sort of attention span of a fly, so she watches the trailer, <laughs> but um, <laughs> Hazel, who's almost five, has seen it and just absolutely loved it and sort of wants to talk about it all the time now. And, yeah, it's, it's that, just really it weird. Be, uh, if you're it's five, really your mother's Mary Poppins. No, but I don't think she see. I think she just thinks it's normal. She's like, well, that's what's, this is what Sonny's mummy does and this is what my mummy does. You know, it's just sort of, like, quite conversational for her. Is it going to help or hinder discipline at home? Oh, hinder. Really? Yeah, I think so. Because she no she already knows I can't fly. She's like, well, she's fake. <laughs> 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 but, but she did ask me to do the voice the other day, just out of nowhere. Because she was quite sort of impassive watching the film, just sort of didn't... just sort of didn't reveal much of what she felt. And then the other day she goes, do your... She's American, of course. Sounds American. But um, she, go she, go she goes, do your Mary Poppins voice. <laughs> And I go, spit spot, and off we go. And she goes, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. And it was just so sweet. And they, they quite like impersonating me in the bathtub. Where, where, <laughs> I, where I say to the, to the dolphin, no, no, not yet. And, and now the two of them go, no, not yet. Like, Because <laughs> 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 so in your, your eldest son, he was on set. Yeah, he was on set. I brought him for every musical number. So he has a very skewed view of what his dad does for a living. He sees Big Ben and goes, Daddy climbs that for work. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it was, it was, it was magical, because he was two turning three when we were making this movie, and it was... They're very formative sort of yeah. memories yeah. for him. And also yeah. the physical sets. It wasn't all CGI oh, yeah. or anything. Oh, it was yeah. nearly no, all no, physical Yeah, sets, he was on yeah. Cherry Tree Lane, he was, you know... The on Big Ben, the Big, ben the big set. Trip a Little Light Fantastic. Yeah, our kids lamp. sort of yeah. explored all that together. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, really yeah. magical. But day. you already must have been quite a cool dad because of your Disney associations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was a Moana dad for a while. Yeah, you that wrote the music yeah. for Moana. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Me. But the thing is, that's got to get you brownie points at home. It does, and that Major. was his first movie, so it was a lot of you're welcome around the house. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, that's the kind of song you can only write for Dwayne The Rock Johnson, because <laughs> only he could get away with it, and you're like, what a charming man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's the only person who could pull off he that. He is lyric. an amazing child. Right? You've just worked in that. I too. did just work with him, yes. Yeah. We did. We just had dinner with him last night. Mm. Yeah. It was really fun. What does the rock eat? Well, <laughs> a sort of like gruel, sort of hash like. Yes, it was a combination it was, of. It was very different from what we were eating. Yes. What was it? Well, he sort of has did one big sit? cheat night a week. Yeah, yeah, he sat. Yeah, oh, because yeah. uh, when he worked with me, he didn't. It was like he was burning calories while eating lunch. And he would just, <laughs> he would sort of stand and eat <laughs> this giant chicken. I was like, do you want to sit? And he was like, no, man, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but last night, he relaxed. Yeah. yeah. For his part. He loves tequila, though. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. <gasps> good old rock. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good old rock. I don't know why I dropped the the, but anyway. <laughs> 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 I know him so well. I just got a rock, no the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, now, Emily, uh, uh, Mortimer, in terms of uh, your children, your children encouraged you to get involved in animation, to do voice work, didn't they? <laughs> Well, didn't you? No, your was it your son? Well, my son loved Finding Nemo. My son's first word was Nemo, <laughs> which is a quite bad reflection of me as a yeah, parent. It says there's a lot of sitting yeah. in front of a telly. <laughs> really, because I did actually love Finding Nemo. I think oh, Finding so Nemo is one of the best films ever made. <laughs> but I did work out quite early on that he was sort of hypnotised watching it, and that it would be quite good to sort of just shove him in front of it for hours at a time. <laughs> and so his first word was Nemo. And then about six months later, I put Nemo on for the hundred thousandth time, and he said. <laughs> Not fucking Nemo again. Honestly, <laughs> 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 you must have had someone else say that. You probably. Me probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the phone, it's fucking Nemo again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, but then, but then you said yes to cars. I did. Yes. How do you know so much about me? It's you like I've read about you. I'm, I'm, I'm Holly Shiftwell. Yes, you are. There, there Holly I am. Shiftwell. <laughs> Holly Shiftwell. Yeah. That just seems like such an adult name to give a character in a cartoon. It? I know it's Doesn't quite it? sort of kinky, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Holly Shiftwell. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, when kids came to the set, they'd be very excited to meet Mary Poppins. But then, double whammy. 
Paddington's there as well. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, because presumably, do kids just... That must be a thing now. No, it, it isn't, because... <laughs> <laughs> because what I've learned it is... It is! No, because well, the thing I've learned is that kids don't understand that you're the voice of it's Paddington. It's true, they don't. You're either Paddington or you're not Paddington. It's true. Paddington, how could he be disembodied from his voice? It's very confusing for them. <laughs> so is it the parents who come up and say... Yes, and they always lie and say, can I have a photo for my child? <laughs> like, they'd be interested. <laughs> <laughs> a man who looks nothing like Paddington. Paddington. <laughs> you say you look nothing like Paddington, but isn't the face in Paddington somehow connected to your face? Yes. Is I, it? Yeah, I wear... Is he? Yeah. I can't see it. I wear a helmet thing and they film my... You have well, to wear a helmet while you're filming it? <laughs> uh, while you're recording the voice? Like a, uh, like a cycling helmet with feel, a camera on the front. Do you feel a bit embarrassed when you... Yes. yes. And it's <laughs> sort of angled about there, like walk right around with, Do you have to walk around with a little case and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Do they really? Sometimes you do, yeah. yeah well, do, 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 I do. assumed... Oh, I see, so you have to rock up. Some days it's just a face, <laughs> some days it's a bit of walking around. Is this, is this <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but now I have to say, uh, Ben's on-screen appearances uh, began at quite an early age. Now, mm. I think you were a teenager, weren't you? Uh, do you did anyone remember Ben Whishaw's <laughs> fine work in a series, not just one, a <laughs> series of bird's eye ads? No. Anyone remember these? Yes. Um, and I didn't know you were... Yeah, how old are you in these? About 17, 18? When I see it, maybe I'll be able to be more accurate. I think I'm about 17. OK. This is... Uh, Honestly, it'll make you want to get some bird's eye uh, chicken curry. Here you go, uh, Ben Whishaw. <laughs> oh, Lord ben. above. Mm. Pink. Pink, looks really nice. Where is it? Oh, it's just bird's eye. Uh, chicken curry. That sounds, it's really interesting. It's got herbs, spices, and 100% chicken breasts. <laughs> Easy tasty, bird's eye, lovely. Come on! So good! That's a brilliant thing! That's a genius! It's brilliant! <laughs> I, I remember that day very well because they couldn't use real steam and it had to look piping hot, this chicken curry. And the real steam, for some reason, wasn't reading. And to my alarm, suddenly there was a bloke next to me with a long straw very long straw puffing a cigarette through the chicken <laughs> curry oh, no, 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 that I then had to eat. <laughs> oh my god! Different yeah. times, different, different times. times. <laughs> By the way, you're brilliant in it. Yeah, yes. well yeah. done. No, that's what a because usually old ads are just funny, but that's a was meant to be funny and is oh. funny. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. Really good. Uh, now, to all your famous co-stars and, and celebrities and things, I imagine Lynn Manuel Miranda. There isn't a famous person in the world who hasn't been to see it's Hamilton. True. Yeah. And... <laughs> I mean, when you were on Broadway, was it just every night there was a huge... It was... You were scared of getting sick and calling out. I got sick once uh, in the year I performed it and I missed Beyoncé and Jay-Z. <gasps> yeah, that's what I said. No. <laughs> and I, I, I was, like, pulling the IV out of my arm, telling... I had a fever of 104, and my wife was like, stay in bed. I was like, I could do it, I could do it. Oh, no. uh, and, yeah, I mean, you just couldn't miss because it was like the internet came to the show every night. And when you first brought it to the UK, you were joined to the audience by someone very famous, uh, Prince Harry yeah. and, and Meghan. <gasps> uh, Ooh. They were, so, Ooh. Yeah, I know. So how does that happen? I look very relaxed. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is going fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Meghan's having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. They're really like uh, they, you. They've been before, so actually. Yeah. And they, they were fans of the show. Um, they'd actually seen the show sort of secretly a few months prior in, in sort of a little secret box. I mean, it's the Victoria Theatre. That's his great-great-great-great-grandmother's theatre, so he knows secret ways in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, of course, George III is... That must be... What is his that? sixth great-grandpa. How oh, weird. And then he's... So he's... Wow, yeah, that's oh, amazing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad he didn't take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do take the piss yeah. uh, a bit out of <laughs> King George III. Uh, have you guys all seen it? Yes. yes. Yeah. Saw it oh. four times. <gasps> Get you. I, saw it I know. Yeah. I know. Mega ben, fan. I've been. I've got to take my mum. I've got to talk to you about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> is that, actually, we were laughing about this. Is that your life, just people asking you for tickets to Hamilton? <laughs> yeah, for the, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> and I'd rather that than me busking outside, because I've been that guy too. I've yeah, been yeah, busking yeah. at the Edinburgh yeah. Fringe, being like, please see our show. <laughs> um, so I like this better. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you are going back into it. Yes, I'm playing Hamilton in January, uh, uh, in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. And uh, I'm, I'm big thing, but in, in English? Yes, in English. Uh, it's, it's a third national tour that we're basically inaugurating and debuting there, except that all of the funds will go to artists and arts organizations struggling to recover from Hurricane Maria. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. When you say you're going back into it, like, at this point, can you just rock up? Or do you have to go... Kind oh, of. Oh, I, you can. Honest, well, well I, I was scared when I saw it with the Duke and Duchess because Megan knew the lyrics slightly better than I did. I was trying to mouth along, and I, I couldn't get it all. But I've been, I've been studying. I think, I think I can do it now. I think I'm ready. And are there, bits, are there bits that you always kind of dread, that they're a bit... You know, even you wrote it, but other bit sort of tongue twisty. Yeah, you know, kind of... yeah. Well, the, the the first Hamilton's first big song in the show is called "My Shot," and it is the biggest sort of meal in terms of lyrics. And if you can get through that, you've got the show. You can. It's sort sort of like the way Hamlet's like six major monologues. It's like if you can get my shot, you, you've got it. Can I poke you with a stick and you can do a little tiny bit? I, oh. I could try. Oh, go on, yes. go on. I have to stand. Can I oh, stand? stand? Yes. 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 I don't, I don't remember if I'm sitting. Okay. Down. Sad. Sad. A scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I'm amazed and astonished. The problem is I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I got a holler just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge. I'm a diamond in the rough. I shine a piece of coal, trying to reach my goal. My power of speech, unimpeachable. Only 19, but my mind is older. These New York City streets get colder. I shoulder every burden, every disadvantage. I've learned to manage. I don't have a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. The plan is to fan this spark into a flame. But damn, it's getting dark, so let me spell out the name. I am the A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. We are meant to be a colony that runs independently. Meanwhile, Britain keeps shitting on us endlessly. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> they tax us relentlessly. Then King George turns around and runs a spending spree. And he ain't ever gonna set his descendants free. So there will be a revolution in this century. And to me, he says in parentheses, don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. And I am not throwing away my shot. Yeah. It's something like that. Oh. Wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was so cool. Hold on, it's there. You got it, you got it. Drink, not drink, not drink, not okay. drink. Yeah. Uh, is that? Take it down. Yeah. You weren't that. You weren't that good. <laughs> well done, that man. What? It is time for music, everyone. This iconic band have sold over 150 million records and defined a generation with their chart-topping hits. Now, after 20 years, they return with a new album. Here, performing life, it is Boy George and Culture Club! There's a train at the station that's ready to leave And a perfect future just made for me I let this stranger walk into my life Stepped out of the darkness back into the light I know I'm crazy, but just a little sane I get to take this ride again You give me hope When I wake up to lift my head was my wheel up for laughter in the madness you give me hope and you give me light will you let me breathe now while I find my truth if I love myself don't mean I don't love you all of my chances are in my Found out who I am. I know I'm crazy, but just a little sing. I get to take this ride again. You give me hope when I wake up to lift my head high and take what's mine. We look for laughter in the man.
know who I am when I'm lost in you. When I'm under the water, when I'm under the water, I look to you. You know I do. I look to you, and the water is cold. You give me hope when I wake up to lift my head. Two on the couch, one on the stool. There right. we go. Sorry. Lovely. Sorry. Very good. We'll move up. We can oh. budge up. Oh. Uh, thank you so much for that. That is from uh, the album, also called Life. Yes. Also on brand. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that is uh, uh, still available to buy now. Well, an album's like a movie. It just goes on forever. <laughs> <laughs> never done. It just goes on and on. Yeah. On and on. What we like. Um, now, there are some connections on the couch. Emily was going to be me in a video for Mark Ronson, but you That's were busy. Okay. Mark Ronson <laughs> called you. <laughs> I told you this when I met you at the Chateau Montmont. Was I drunk? What was oh, I? The Chateau Montmont. <laughs> <laughs> the rule is, basically, the rule is, you know, you can... You know, not now, obviously. Me, yes. when I was, like, 19, dreadlocks, the whole thing. Basically, anyone could look like me if you put them in that look. Man, I would but have If you're beautiful, to have it really you... helps, and Wait, you are. Wait, so who ended up being you? <laughs> Diane Kruger. Bloody Kruger! Mm. <laughs> 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 in you. But but she is very beautiful. But she was though, dragged to the East End. Mm. It was... It, she had a terrible time. So I'm glad we didn't do that. I would have loved to have done your eye makeup. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I'd love to be you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Mary Poppins returns. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whiff of it right there, isn't there? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Pop an umbrella in and a carpet bag. Oh, that's there. a bit yeah. more Wizard of Oz, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Boy George and Culture Club, here you are, back together again. And the I've talked to you on the radio, but I haven't talked to you guys. Mm -hmm. So, when you come back together again, mm -hmm. is it kind of lovely or is it kind of like, oh, this is exactly <laughs> the way it was before? Well, it's a bit like a family getting together for it Christmas is. dinner. Yes. You know, it's like you sort of... You know which buttons not to press. Although some, peop <laughs> some people still press buttons. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my favourite story from the tour. Marky told a woman at the meet and greet that she looked like young Theresa May. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't go well. It didn't go well. It didn't go well. It's brilliant. <laughs> no, I, say, I say bands are like families. You don't really pick your bandmates. You know, you just sort of end up with them somehow. Yeah. So, in terms of, you know, uh, being back in the studio and recording, uh, does Boy George win all the arguments? Because when Karma Chameleon came along... Yes. Is, is this true that he liked it, but the rest... Guilty. Of... Guilty. I wasn't my favourite. Oh, was it? You hated it? It was me. It wasn't my favourite. He hates it, but he paid for his house. <laughs> <laughs> He always says that. <laughs> but it's true, and mine, and yours. I have a theory about it. It's too long a theory. <laughs> oh, don't go into it. It's a great song. Yeah. And have you got plans it's, for 2019? Or have you just, got, you just kind of enjoying the album oh, and no, enjoying 2018? We have plans. We're working on new plans. We've got yes. a song... We've just done a song with Gladys Knight, which is oh, really amazing. Oh, oh, that's wow. Great. That's beyond. Yeah. Beyond. When's that going to be out? New Year. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. January. Excellent. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, good luck with that. Good luck with the thank record. You. And uh, thank you so much for doing that performance. Uh, Boy George and Comfort to go, everybody. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, right, that's yeah. nearly it. Yeah. Before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Yeah. <gasps> Hello. Oh, Hello. You look so comfortable. <laughs> 
I am comfortable. <laughs> right now. Uh, uh, what's your name? My name is Griff. G Griff? Yes. Griff? Griff, yes. <laughs> Griff? <laughs> yes, Griff. <laughs> Griff. Uh, so, where are you from, Griff? Well, I was born in South Wales, but I'm now living in Coaster in Essex. All right. Yeah. Uh, got a, it got a, almost a whoop. <laughs> and, uh, what, what do you do in Colchester in Essex? Um, I'm a notary public. A notary? Public. Is that like a judgy type thing? It's, it's a special kind of lawyer. We deal with things that go abroad. Yeah. OK. I'll draw a veil. <laughs> uh, uh, Griff, off you go with your story. OK. Many years ago, when I was a newly qualified solicitor, I was sent by my firm uh, to visit a very important client and get to know their business. I was really, really nervous about... went along and the meeting was going really well and the managing director was lovely. Um, and towards the end of the meeting, he said to me, would you like to come and see the factory where we make the product? So I said, yes, obviously. So we went across to the factory and the warehouse door opened and there was all this machinery noise and everything else. Um, and he just walked a few steps away from me. And, and do you remember those old gobstopper stop machines where you could just turn the... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. So he went across and he took two marshmallow sweets out of this machine <laughs> and he offered them to me like this. And I thought, my God, I don't know if his hands are clean, what's he been doing, you know, can I take <laughs> these, what can I do? Um, but I thought, oh, I really want to make a good impression. So I just took the marshmallows off him, put them in my mouth and started to chew. Um, at which point he looked at me and said, No, they're for your ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good story. Yeah. You're an author. Yeah. Oh, you want to be it? Oh, she wants to be it. Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. she all right? Yeah. Is she OK? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. I'm not surprised. Oh, I see. There was just such a big reaction, I thought <laughs> something bad happened. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, let, let's have another one. Oh, they're still, they're still removing her. No, she wanted... She wanted no, I was letting did. her walk. She wanted to be flipped. Did she say, flip me? I hope that's what she <laughs> said. Because <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, is she is she being cleared? <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Hello. Oh, Hello. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know you know families at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Glass is too much. Oh yeah. It was just too much. That was the glamorous aunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fun aunt. Oh. <laughs> uh, have we cleared that person now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready for another one. Hello! Hi. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth, lovely. Oh, and uh, what do you do, Sarah Beth? Um, I work in Property PR. Property PR? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Property needs more PR. <laughs> 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 OK, Sarah. Sarah Beth or J Sarah Beth? It's Sarah Beth, yeah. Sarah is Sarah Beth. Yeah, I got that right. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, Sarah Beth, off you go. OK, so uh, five months ago, I gave birth to my uh, lovely little girl. Um, and after doing the necessary, I um, was um, lying on a hospital bed, uh, being seen to by a midwife. I, I won't go any further. Um, um, and during that moment, my husband was having skin to skin with our daughter. So I thought, oh, that, that's a lovely picture, camera moment. So I, I took a picture um, and sent it to all our family and friends. But what I didn't realise that was my husband was sitting in front of a reflective window. And, um, <laughs> and there I was with my legs up in stirrups. Um... <laughs> You should walk. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> and that really is all we've got time for. It's a great time to go to make sure you stuff. I tell your story, you can contact us via website at this address. Please say a huge thank you to all of our guests. Boy George and Culture Club! <laughs> ben Wishaw! with a starring Hogmanay sofa, including Rita Ora, Guy Pearce, Nicholas Holt, Kira Knightley, Catherine Tate and Olivia Colman. Until then, have a very happy Christmas. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye! <laughs>